your symphony of selves is kind of talking about uh, kind of the idea of this, this multiplicity of selves that we, you know, maybe the idea that we are simply this one, uh, you know, isolated self is, is sort of an illusion. Um, yeah. and, and maybe we're actually kind of composed of all of these different selves and that actually might be sort of a healthy psychological thing, not necessarily like a disorder is sort of what I got um, out of the book. So tell me a little about what, how, how this sort of theory, how these ideas sort of came about for you. Well, it's really been a couple of decades. So where it started, I'm not sure, except through observation. See, one of the things about science is that when you see things the way they are, you can't avoid, um, you can't turn that off. Once you've seen something, and I began to see that it was, it made more sense to think of ourselves as a multiplicity, even though we're, we're all in the same box. And as I started both reading and thinking and talking and having a family, it became a, a way of understanding that simply made more sense. And, and the central problem for assuming you're a single self is how do you deal with your own inconsistencies? And one of the things that we know is you may not be aware of your inconsistencies, but if you think of the people you're closest to, you're terribly aware of theirs. And you, you just wonder, is, you know, how could you have said that? You, you've always been so nice. Or you say to yourself, I don't know what got into me. Now, that's a real statement which is you just did something which another part of you is horrified about or ashamed or just amazed. Um, so that's the core. And if I, I can make it a very simple, simple question and uh, you can answer it because you're answering it for everyone. Have you ever argued with yourself? Sure. Who is the other person in the argument? A different self. That's the obvious. Okay. In fact, the problem for us in the book was it's so obvious. What's the point of writing a 400 plus pages book about it? And the answer is because there's another, there's a theory which is, which doesn't have evidence, which overlays our real observations. And the theory is that you're a single unified self, no matter how little that makes sense. Um, and there's some historical reasons why we're, we're saying that. But the history of psychology actually is the other way. Early psychology was incredibly clear. The father of psychology is known as William James. Terribly clear that there were selves. He worked with some people in France, Charcot uh, and others. Terribly clear that there were selves. Uh, one, of, one of the students, one of Charcot's students is named Sigmund Freud. Early Freud, total awareness of selves. Then there was a historical shift. Freud changed all his theories for reasons we probably won't bother with. And we began to suppress the notion that we were selves. And so what we did in this book is simply say, if it's true that we're selves, then the evidence should be pretty evident everywhere. And so we've looked at philosophers and psychologists and neuroscientists and religious figures and religious traditions and pop music and poetry and fiction everywhere, there are selves. So it clarified suddenly why we behave in different ways. And the the result of, of, the book, of people literally reading the book, and we're getting nice letters, they say, oh, I actually am becoming kinder to the people I live with, more tolerant of my kids' irregularities, and actually more compassionate. So that's a lot for a book. 